Great. Thanks, Adrian, And thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, as Adrian mentioned, I think, you know, we've got a small group today. So it would be awesome to um, be able to keep it somewhat um, more intimate and casual. And um, I have a small uh, a deck to walk through, which can kind of help frame the conversation. And then of course, if you have um, any burning topics or want to stop me along the way, I think uh, that would be fantastic. I think Q&A would be a, a really good way to, to keep this um, engaging for everyone. So with that, I'm going to, let's see, share my screen and get this into presentation mode. All right, can everyone see? Okay, great. So feed, um, okay, let me pause this here and go back. Um, you know, thank you, Adrian, for um, being a part of our loyal community. I really appreciate it. Um, feed is an organization that has been around actually for 15 years. So uh, 15 years going strong, we are, celebrating our anniversary this fall, which is a super exciting time um, to be moving into. Um, if you're not familiar with Feed, Feed is an impact-driven uh, lifestyle brand that believes that everyone has the power to um, make a change through their everyday actions. So we very much believe in the power of consumers to be able to vote with their dollars um, and to support brands that have you know, deep purpose behind them. Um, Feed it was founded on the principle that small actions can make a big change. And we're very much focused on um, global food insecurity and being able to provide children with the nutrition they need to grow and thrive. Um, so hunger is unfortunately a vast issue um, that affects the world deeply. Um, this number is ever changing, but nearly 800 million people are affected by hunger every day globally. Um, and here in the United States, that number is actually quite significant as well. It's not something that um, really, I think historically we hear much about or talk much about. It's, it's something that's come to light much more so during the pandemic, um, but actually, you know, nearly one in four children are actually food insecure, um, which is really astounding to think in, you know, one of the wealthiest nations in the world, we also um, are facing this in our local communities. Something that um, people also don't really know about uh, is that hunger and childhood hunger specifically disproportionately affects young women more than young boys. And that's because in a lot of areas in the world, um, especially, um, you know, I would say less developed areas, um, oftentimes girls are, um, are not necessarily preferenced in terms of send, like families sending their kids to, um, to get an education. And so in being able to receive a healthy, nutritious meal at school, parents are incentivized to get their young girls to school, which keeps them in school and helps them sort of break out of um, the cycle that they've been born into. Now Feed, um, Feed's model was founded on um, a pretty sort of um, simple, um, I would say simple um, and easy to understand consumer um, facing model. So every single product we make and sell um, helps provide nutritious meals to kids in need around the globe. And every single product we, we make also indicates how much you're, you're, you're able to provide with your purchase. So we, you know, we believe that I would say tangibility is probably one of the most important things in terms of having an impact-driven um, organization. A lot, of, um, a lot of organization these days are purpose-driven, mission-driven, um, but it can sometimes feel a little bit um, out of reach, I should say, or um, maybe unclear. And so what we strive to do is make sure that that impact is very known to our consumer. Um, and so every single product is actually stamped with, stamped on the outside or, or um, stamped on the inside in our interior tag with 
the number of school meals that you're providing to kids through your purchase. Um, so on the left here, this is called the Feed One bag. It's our heritage bag, and um, it was the it was the first bag actually that we um, made and sold. Um, that bag feeds one child in school for an entire school year, which is pretty remarkable to think that just through purchasing um, or shopping with Feed that you're able to impact um, a single child in that way. So 15 years in, we've been able to, I would say through the you know, huge help and support of our consumer community, being able to provide over 100 million meals. That number is actually around 125 million meals um, to date. And you know, we're looking forward to our next chapter. We're, we're moving forward um, into actually a new vertical. Um, more to come, but looking to launch next spring. And you know, very excited to be able to take um, this impact to the next level. So we're talking about community, we're talking about loyalty. And I think um, as I was thinking through you know, this topic and this question, I believe that what Feed has done so well, what the team has done so well is really lean into our community in a way that engages them, empowers them, and really utilizes them as our resource um, in terms of brand development, brand evolution, um, campaigns, and other ways to really think about how we um, give back. Um, you know, of course, childhood hunger and global food insecurity is our North Star. That's, that's the cause we are most um, deeply passionate about, and um, I would say definitely like that, that is the root of everything we do, but there are a lot of other issues that are important to us as a team that are important to our consumers. And so what we've strived to do over the last 15 years plus is really um, lean in to what our consumers are talking about um, and then show up. You know, I think the other the other part about being an impact driven and purpose driven organization is is really putting our words into action, and that's what we strive to do every day. And I think ultimately that is what has really helped us um, build the loyalty that we've seen over um, over the last decade plus. So um, there are a number of ways that we've done this. Um, I just wanted to be able to provide some examples, um, some food for thought. Um, but a few years ago for International Women's Day, before I would say <laughs> INWD even be, became as um, big of a sort of editorial 10 point mo 10 pole moment as it is today, um, everybody's you know leaning into it these days. Um, we actually really responded to um, a lot of just dialogue from our consumer base that you know people are very interested in um, girl girls empowerment female empowerment, um, being a women-led organization. In fact, we're actually an entire uh, team of women. Um, you know, this is something we deeply care about. And of course, it, you know, as I mentioned, there are also ties to um, childhood hunger and, and, um, and girls' empowerment. So we, we put together this awesome campaign. We reached out to um, some really influential women um, who we know support our cause, Ariana Huffington, uh, Cleo Way, Juliana Tertian, Ula Johnson, and all you know, diverse in their own right in terms of industry, diverse in their own right in terms of personal causes that they care about. Um, and you know, leaned in in that we we work with them to develop like a custom tote that each of them designed with us. Um, that then they were able to go out to their own communities. Um, to of course promote and talk about talk about feed, talk about the issue of childhood hunger, um, and then with every bag that we sold, we we also donated to donated to a specific organization of um, these women's choices, which were quite I would say um, diverse in um, in cause as well. Um, in addition. Um, you know, feed it was definitely built on and continues to be built on um, the idea that we we design purposeful, quality driven goods, everyday goods um, that can of course uh, give back to um, fighting 
global food insecurity and childhood hunger. Um, so we, we've always been built on, I would say, products that require traditional manufacturing, but along the way, we started to really think through what are the ways in which we can evolve this? What are the ways in which we can continue to, I think, respond to what our consumers demand of us, what our consumers demand of other organizations, um, and think through, of course, like our impact and our footprint on um, the world. Um, Again, I think, you know, hunger is tied to a number of very timely topics, climate change being one of them. Um, and so we've thought a lot about how we how we can evolve our products to be able to create more um, sustainable fabrications and then also how to be able to give back in a more sustainable way. So we have over the last several years started to produce a lot more artisan um, artisan products and we're working with artisan collectives across the globe. Um, this image, I love this image. This is um, a picture of three uh, female artisans from a co-op we work with in Rajasthan, India. Um, they are you know, trained in traditional hand block printing. Um, they have, you know, hand sewn, hand blocked, hand printed um, several of our styles over the last, um, you know, many years. And, you know, traditionally they would be without, um, without work. And so what we've been able to do is help provide, um, you know, hopefully sustainable livelihoods to a community of women that can also then give back uh, locally um, to their community as well in terms of providing um, nutritious meals to, to kids in their communities. Um, another example of this is um, one of our longstanding bags. Uh, it's also a feed one bag, so it feel, feeds in a kid for an entire school year. Um, but this, is, this was developed in um, a co-op in Kenya. And so not only was the artisanship um, you know, we were supporting our local artisanship in Kenya, but then we directed and earmarked all of the funds and all of the school meals back to um, that area as well. And then, um, I love this picture, but so back in, I would say, 2014, 2015, 2016, so around that time, we were hearing a lot from our community that, you know, of course, we really care and support the cause of um, global hunger, but hey, there's a big problem in the United States. How come, you know, you only work with the United Nations World Food Program? Well, at the time, you know, we had built feed through a longstanding partnership with the United Nations. Um, that goes back to the founding story. Lauren Bush Lauren founded feed in 2007 after she was a uh, school, a, a college ambassador with the UN. She traveled the globe with them and realized, hey, there's no marketing engine for what they're doing. There's a there's got to be a way for individuals to be able to support this cause and give back. And that's how FEED was born. So for the first decade or so, FEED, um, you know, really only had one partner and we were making a significant impact globally. Um, but meanwhile, we really weren't um, supporting, I would say, domestic giving in a large way. And our consumers noted that um, and we heard from them a lot. So that was kind of like this, this dialogue that was going on for a couple of years. And then we decided, hey, yeah, it's time. You know, we're still going to work with the United Nations. Um, and in addition, you know, as we're scaling, we believe we can, we can add an additional giving partner. So since 2017, um, we have been working with No Kid Hungry, um, which is the largest, largest organization here fighting, um, working against childhood hunger. They provide um, you know, school, they're mainly known, I think, for the school breakfast program here in the United States. And we have been able to um, scale our giving with them um, probably four to five times over the last several years. So I really, this one I think is so important because again, not that we weren't conscious or aware of what was happening locally in our backyards, but um, it definitely was this call to action from our consumer community that engaged us in a dialogue of, yes, this is the time. Yes, this makes sense. Certainly, like we are, you know, we're not losing sight of our partnership with the United Nations, but there's no reason we, um, you know, we can't bring on another partner. And that just enables us to, you know, double down on our impact. Um, 
so this is turning taking um you know taking the sort of like community dialogue in a different direction but something that's been um really fun and i would say really impactful in terms of creating that loyalty amongst our community is really tapping them for our products as well um getting their opinion getting their um getting their take on you know our offering and um our messaging and what we're providing them so two years ago you know we we were sort of we had already set out to um to kind of develop a collection that would meet the needs of um women on the go so women who were you know going to the office um needed a mobile office um, could use their could use a bag from work to weekend, and we thought, hey, let's let's take this out to our community. So we um, we actually crowdsourced a campaign on social and said, calling you know calling our community, um, we are looking to design our new work bag, um, and we'd love to hear from you. We want to know what features you would want, what's most important to you. Uh, we put different iterations of the product in front of them. We had them vote. Um, and this, I mean, it flew off the shelves in like weeks and is like to date um, our best selling collection. So I think, um, you know, we haven't really, I would say that was so successful that we realized that it's extremely important to be engaging our consumers when it comes to product development and thinking through um, new campaigns, new verticals. Um, as I mentioned, we are moving into a new uh, category, uh, a new CPG category actually quite soon and looking to launch in spring. Um, and, you know, it's been a couple of years of a lot of R&D. And in the midst of it, we, we basically have taken um, a lot of our, the sort of survey points, you know, not just like the general population or our target consumer, but to our audience. Um, so have done email surveying, have actually done a lot of chat surveying, which has been quite effective um, because again, it has really enabled us to um, get to the heart of that kind of like meaningful dialogue. Um, and they have been able to, I would say, inform actually where we're going with uh, the CPG product line. So, you know, we gave ranking in terms of what we're thinking of um, launching. Um, and all of the data that has come back has really informed us to um, to help direct our product pipeline, um, which I love. Um, so this is just one example of, I would say, another way in which well, Feed, you know, definitely believes in global citizenship. It's it's core to what we do. It's it's really um, one of our key values, and you know, this idea of global citizenship is has become more and more important to our consumer community. Um, and we really, again, I think, try to make sure that we show up so that we're not just kind of talking the talk, but that people really see feed in action. Um, so we, we basically just try to be as responsive as we can. Now, there are a lot of things happening in the world, and, and there's only so much time that or, an organization has or only so many resources that an organization has. Um, but I think that responsiveness, um, again, and that listening to what our community is talking about, what they care about, what they're following at the time, um, you know, what they're most concerned about at the time, um, has really made an impact in terms of creating that, those sort of like deep loyal ties to our base. Um, so some examples of responsiveness have just been, you know, creating campaigns around um, climate disaster. So hurricane relief, certainly COVID relief um, around a couple, two years ago or so um, during Coachella, we partnered with um, a local artist to the region to create a line of bandanas that um, supported food deserts in that region. Um, what else? Um, certainly, I think, you know, a lot of us are working very hard to, to do the hard work of being, you know, showing up to be, make sure that we're working towards being an anti-racist organization. Um, 
and that has, I think, taken a lot of, um, you know, we've taken a lot of input from our community as well. Um, campaigns around, I would say that, um, in addition, you know, COVID relief, I, you know, our community really showed up over the last couple of years as, um, as the food disparities have really increased and as the pandemic has taken its toll on, um, you know, supply chain and, and hunger has just grown over the last couple of years, especially locally. Um, and yeah, our community has really shown up to support us. And in turn, we've, we've hopefully shown up to support, um, you know, them as well. And one example of that is, you know, during the peak year, the first year of the pandemic, we, um, we basically partnered with local food banks in uh, five major cities um, to, to build campaigns around, um, you know, just hunger awareness um, and developing uh, funds to go back locally to those, um, to those communities in which our consumers were, um, most centrally located, I should say, where we had large populations of our consumers. We have, um, again, I think this idea of like local campaign, local giving has been so central to building that loyalty. Um, a couple of years ago, we also, we kind of popped in, um, we popped in I would say some specialty specialty retailers and boutiques around the country, um, again, developing campaigns around um, the local issues. Um, so Los Angeles, we were in Los Angeles, we were in Kansas City, Houston, um, and some other areas, but you know, you can see here on this example, we created like a, a meal wall, so like a, a tally of meals raised specifically for the Los Angeles community and then you know gave back not through our large global partners but through um, local food banks in the area. And then I would say kind of the hallmark of um, the hallmark of our community sort of galvanization um, and our organic um, brand building has been Feed Supper. Um, something I'm super proud of um, because it's really, it's not related to sales whatsoever. It's not transactional. It's completely grassroots oriented, um, but it's a campaign that really just pulls people together. So anyone can host a supper. Um, it's like hosting, it's like running in a marathon and, and raising funds, um, you know, for a cause that you care about. For, for us, you can sign up through um, our website to host a supper, create a goal, you know, you know, through my, my son's birthday party, we're going to get together and raise um, 500 meals. Um, and it's really just a way to, you know, get involved and, and talk about the issue and, um, you know, and not necessarily have it tied to, to our brand and through coming to our website and, and purchasing a product. Um, so this is one we hear about all the time from our community. People love this program um, and have really gone out into the world and hosted their own suppers and um, have been able to, you know, get involved and from hosting a supper, have been able to organize local volunteerism in their communities. Um, so I'm really proud of this. And again, it's it feels, to me, the most special because it's 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 all about community. It's all about gathering, um, and and it's really about grassroots activism and organizing. Um, so these are just some of the ways I think you know over the last fifteen years or so, Feed has been able to build these deep ties to our consumer community, um, and. You know, I think there's a lot more we can do. One thing the team is currently working on is, is really thinking through our brand evolution. Again, it's, you know, there are a lot of issues that people are deeply concerned about right now. And I think that we are deeply concerned about as a team. And we want to make sure that, again, that we show up in a way that really um, supports, supports our community um, who have been so loyal to us for so long. So with that, I am going to stop the share. Um, 
leave it open to questions. Yes, um, thank you for that incredible overview. Um, really applaud you and all of your efforts in trying to make this world a better place, especially as it relates to, you know, um, helping to heal this massive challenge of world hunger. Um, we definitely have some questions that would love to share with you from some of our participants. Uh, Great. First one is asking about how can you tell what socially conscious, conscious brands to trust? Oh my gosh, that is such a good question. <laughs> One that we talk about a lot because I think that, you know, creating credibility um, is, it's, it's not necessarily an easy thing and um, not to throw any shade, but there are a lot of brands out there these days that um, it just feels like everybody, everybody has sort of a mission these days, um, which I think is valid because it's responsive to what consumers want. Um, but what we try to do as an organization is make sure that if we say we're going to do it, we do it. So we are very conscious of greenwashing um, and not necessarily using buzzwords just to use buzzwords. So, I mean, it's a hard question to answer, but I can tell you what um, we talk a lot about as a team, um, and that is creating transparency. So, um, you know, being able to provide the necessary information or all of the information that comes up when, um, when you're sort of talking through what your purpose is, um, you know, we want to make sure that when we're talking about school feeding, we talk about our partners, um, we are very diligent in who we work with, um, they are um, the largest humanitarian organizations out there. Um, and there's a lot of information they have and can provide on, you know, how they do school feeding. What is a school meal composed of? Why is it nutritious? Um, how much does it cost? How much, you know, what's feed sort of, um, I would say, how much is feed giving out of their, their total sales? Um, so again, being able to provide that transparency is, is the first sort of key to being able to, um, I think, understand how trustworthy a brand is. Um, and then again, I think, you know, and we're not perfect at this, but the, the, the thing that we continually are working on and um, looking to sort of evolve over time is how do we, how do we make sure that our actions support our words? Um, you know, one of, one example is we, we talk a lot about volunteerism, giving back in your local community. Well, we make sure that we volunteer as a team as well. So we make sure that quarterly, um, if it's not you know more than quarterly, we are we're actually engaging as a team in a volunteer activity related to either you know hunger or another cause that we feel deeply about. Um, we have organized volunteer events from our store um, on a bi-weekly basis. So for me, it's, you know, it's transparency and I think action. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, another question that we have is, what about packaged food and bev? Mm -hmm. Renee from Amazi does a great job working with local farmers in Uganda. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, kind of taking that model, you know, how do you see that going now that you're also potentially launching, well, you are launching a CPG extension in the fall, which is super excited and I'd love to hear more. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, so yeah, but uh, yes, what is your take on that? Yeah, so I think, so what about CPG products, meaning how can they, can we elaborate just a little bit more? Oh. So, hey, this is Amy. Sorry, that was my question. I think I missed, I came in late and missed the introduction about the CPG extension part. Congratulations. Um, so I, I was thinking maybe your platform could be a good way for these little brands to, you know, like, um, I don't know, like go to market. I don't, I don't know what's the right word for this, but yeah. um, since you're creating your own extension, it might not be the right question to ask. No, it's actually a great question. And in fact, we, um, we have had historically a program called Feed Finds. 
Um, so we, I would say namely that was through our physical brick and mortar store um, where we actually, we had a so whole rubric of um, not really check marks, but like we wanted to make sure that the brands and the products that we were curating and supporting were um, impactful or purpose-driven in their own right. Um, so really focused on like sustainable products, um, products that gave back in a significant way, um, products that were or brands that were fighting climate change or supporting clean oceans, um, and then artisans in general. I mean, I think feed for its entire 15 years has been very supportive of um, being able to champion artisan uh, workmanship and livelihoods. Um, and so through this program physically in our store, um, we have been able to promote, I would say, smaller up and coming brands and then artisan works. Um, and then in addition, you know, we took the 15% pledge to support black, uh, black owned brands and makers as well. Um, and our hope is is to bring this online. So you are going in the right direction. <laughs> hey, um, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I guess, well, we can talk more about that. I work at um, the e-commerce group at PepsiCo. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Great. Yeah, that's Thank great. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. She also sits on the Young Professionals Board for Nationally New York and has been a great asset to us. So appreciate all your support. Awesome. I'm going to open it up to anyone else. Would anyone else like to ask a question or feel free to drop it, drop it in the chat? Really appreciate everyone joining today. And just how amazing is Sarah? <laughs> oh, you guys are so kind. I <laughs> now honestly, like, again, and this is, you know, this is a, a topic about community and I really am just so thankful for, um, for the way our community shows up, especially over the last couple of years with the pandemic. I mean, our business was good and that meant our, our giving was is, has been double to triple what we've been able to do over the years before. So um, it means a lot to, of course, from a brand perspective, be able to listen to your customers, engage in a dialogue with them, like show up and, you know, the proof is in the pudding, really you put out into the world um, what they care about. Um, but equally, it means a lot when they show up for you and, and show up for a cause that, of course, like we're deeply committed to. So but thank you, everyone, today for joining. You, know, you talked a lot about um, the strategies that you implemented to obviously grow your community. But I was curious, were there any, stra any strategies that you tested that were not successful um, in, in helping to build that loyalty and you know, what yeah. are you looking out for? Yeah, that's a great question. And actually um, a timely one because um, we have been talking a lot about our referral program. So, um, you know, I would think through just, we have a lot of sort of, you know, loyalists who are like writing in with reviews, we get letters of support um, and it feels like we have such a great, source of ambassadors to be able to kind of create more of a network effect and grow out and find more ambassadors and obviously loyal consumers. Um, we implemented two years ago a uh, refer a friend program. And I would say to, to date, we've seen like very minimal return. Um, and I think, I mean, of course, there's a lot happening in the digital landscape and, you know, that where consumers are, what they're, how they're responsive. They move from email to text, <laughs> back to email. Um, they were on Facebook. Now, you know, you can't reach them on Facebook. So there are a lot of sort of, you know, channel fluctuate fluctuations, I should say. Um, but I, I would say that right now that has been a challenging one for us. And the only time, in fact, where it really we have seen kind of a meaningful lift is when we created very specific, very topical campaigns related to refer a friend. So last um, Valentine's Day, we kind of turned it on its head and we said, all right, let's not focus on making this kind of transactional. Let's just, you know, talk about, you know, something that everybody's like 
caring about right now, which is like love and like friendship and, and family. Um, and so we basically just said, okay, for every friend you refer, we are going to donate uh, extra meals. And so it really was, a, again, it, was, it wasn't like asking too much from someone and it was a way to be able to kind of build on that, um, of course, like technical marketing you know, campaign to, um, to generate excitement and, um, and yeah, to sort of, I would say, um, make something feel less transactional than what um, the kind of like basic foundational um, platform really is. Uh, we have another question. So someone here has just started a CPG company. She would like to know, how can I build community as a new company, especially, especially in the virtual reality? Especially in the, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think a lot of it is potentially taking some of those like physical means of creating community and then and kind of turning them on their head, so to speak, and um, creating them uh, virtually. So again, this is like a topic we're thinking a lot about as well, because we used to be a very event-driven um, organization. <laughs> a lot of our um, marketing, um, a lot of our marketing events were driven off of um, uh, communal sort of gatherings, the supper program. Um, we have done a lot of like round tables. So I would say that could be done through, um, certainly through creating social, um, that social awareness um, on our organic platforms. Um, and then through potentially, yeah, taking some of these events and turning them virtual. Um, you know, Pete, I feel like we've got like a decent sized group here um, in the middle of the day. Um, which is awesome to see. And so I, I, I do think people are hungry again for um, that communal bonding and being able to gather and whether that's virtual or small intimate, you know, outdoor events. Um, it really feels like the right time to be, um, yeah, to be starting to organize those kinds of activities again. So I would say that's definitely, that was always key to our um, success and growth. Thank you. 